Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and in this video we're going to convert a caller into a hexadecimal string and back. Let's get started. So here's my scene, I have a game object in here with a sprite renderer displaying a white square. And I have a game handler script running which has a reference to my sprite game object. Now in here I want to change the sprite caller into red, so the way to do it is first of all grab the reference to the sprite renderer which is on the sprite game object get component sprite renderer. And then I go into the sprite renderer and set the caller to a new caller red, green, blue, so 100. Zero, zero. So the sprite should now be red. Yep, there you go, the sprite changed the caller to red. So this works, but I'm used to dealing with colors in hexadecimal values, so I would prefer instead to be able to write something like FF0000. That to me is much more simple than using 100. So let's make some functions to create a color object with a hexadecimal string. So first we need to convert a string into the corresponding decimal number. To do that, we can use a function in the system namespace dot convert and do a 2 in 32 of a hexadecimal value. So let's convert FF from base 16. And this will give me a decimal integer. So let's do a debug.log and see what this says. All right, as you can see in the input, it says 255, which is correct. FF equals 255. All right, so let's make this into a function. So a private int hex to death. In here, I'm going to receive a string for the hexadecimal and I'm going to return this. So convert a hexadecimal string into a decimal value. Now let's make another function to do the reverse. So a private string des to hex. And in here, I'm going to receive an int for the decimal value. In order to convert back, we can simply use to string with a format. So return value dot to string and the format we're going to use is x2 which converts it to a hexadecimal representation with always two digits so let's go up here and test so do a debug.log of doing hex to des of ff and then a dec to hex of 255 all right so this one should print 255 and this one should print ff let's see and yep, there it is, 255 FF. Okay, so we can now easily convert from a hexadecimal string into a decimal number. Now the caller struct works with a normalized value and not with 255. So let's make two more functions to work with normalized values. So in here, make a private string float normalized to hex. And here we're going to receive a float value. So this function will receive a float between zero and one. To return the correct hex value, let's multiply that normalized value by 255 and then use the previous function. So we're going to return des to hex of the value times 255f and do a math f dot round to int. So in here we're going to receive a value between 0 and 1, then we're going to multiply it by 255, so if we get a 1 in here, then we're going to have a 255 in here. We're going to round that number to an integer and then send it to this function to return the hexadecimal representation of that number. All right, now let's do the opposite function. So a private float hex to float normalized. And here I'm going to receive a string for the hexadecimal representation. And I'm going to return. And here you convert hex to a decimal of this one. So as you know, this one will return between 0 and 255, so all we have to do is divide this by 255f. So the return value of this will be from 0 to 1. So let's test in here. So in here, this one should output 1, and this one should output ff. So let's see. Yep, there you go, 1 and ff. All right, so now we have all the helper functions to help us convert a hexadecimal string into various values that we can use in our caller struct. So let's finally make a function to return a caller object. Make a private caller get caller from string. And in here we're going to receive a string for our hex string. And we're going to have a float for each caller. So float red is going to be a 
hex to float normalize of the red portion of this string. Now this string will be a complete hexadecimal string, so it will have, as you can see up here, two values for the red, two for the green, and two for the blue. So we only want to grab the first two characters of this string. In order to do that, go into the hex string and do a substring starting on index zero and going for a length of two. So in here, if this receives FF0000, then in here it will return FF. So now let's do the same for the other colors. So you got red, you got green, and you got blue. Now red starts on zero and has two characters. Green starts on two and has two characters. And blue starts on four and has two characters. So we now have all three values in here that convert this hex string into normalized values. All we need to do is finally do a return new color and use red, green, and blue. All right, so now up here, we can remove the comments from here. And instead of making a new color, let's do get color from string and give it FFFF00. So full red and full green should display yellow. Let's see. All right, there you go, our square is yellow. Okay, great. So now let's make the reverse of this function. So a private string get string from color. And we're going to receive a color in here. We're going to grab the hexadecimal string from each color. So string red will be float normalized to hex of color dot R, which is the red value. And do the same thing for the other colors. So green and blue. All right, so now these variables contain the hexadecimal values of that color. So for example, red contains FF and blue contains 00. zero. So all we need to do now is return a string, which is red plus green plus blue. The plus concatenates strings. So if red is FF and green is 00, zero this will return FF00. Zero zero. All right, so let's go up here and test. First, let's do get color from string FF, FF00. Zero zero. And here, get string from color. And we're going to give it the same color, which is 110. So we should be able to see both representations of yellow. And yep, as you can see, here are the two representations of yellow. You can see it's got one the red, one the green, and zero in the blue. And here, same thing, FF, FF, zero, zero. All right, so now the only thing left to add is alpha support. As you can see in here, the alpha is one since we didn't touch it. So in here on get call from string, we'll receive a string in here. We need to test to make sure that this string contains an alpha value. So in here, we're going to do if hex string dot length is bigger than eight. If it does have eight characters, then it does have an alpha value. So if it does have, then we want to use that. So we want to do alpha equals of the hex string starting on six. But if it does not contain that, then we want alpha to be a default one F. And down here, let's return the alpha value. So this function supports receiving a string that is only six characters. So it only contains red, green, and blue, but it also supports eight characters. So it supports alpha. And down here on get string from color, let's add an optional parameter for grabbing the alpha or not. So let's say bool use alpha. Let's make it optional. So set the default to false. And here, if we are not using alpha, then return what we were returning previously. But if we are returning the alpha, we're going to return red, green, plus blue, plus alpha. And we are going to grab the alpha value on color.a. All right, so let's go up here and set the sprite to half transparent. So let's give it 88 on the alpha. And do the same thing in here, 88 and uh, 0.5f on the alpha. So the sprite should now be yellow and half transparent. Yep, there you go. It is in yellow. You can see the transparency is about half. You can see that one, 88 equals 0.53. And here it still says only the three color values since we didn't set the optional parameter. So let's try that. In here, set use alpha to true. And now it should say, yep, there you go, FFFF0080. So there you have it. In this video, we'll learn how to convert hexadecimal strings into color objects so we can easily use color strings in our code. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time.